Hey guys, welcome back to 90 Feet From Home. Today we're gonna get into another stat, and while this one on the surface might seem complicated, it's actually one of the simpler ones we're gonna look at. So today we are gonna talk about ISO. Now ISO is not in search of, which is how I always mentally read it, and it's also not lens sensitivity for you photography nerds out there like me. Nope, in baseball, ISO refers to isolated power. And basically the goal of ISO is just to determine how often, and basically the goal of ISO is just to determine how often per at bat a particular hitter's hits go for extra bases. Because extra base hits are usually harder hit balls, ISO then can also be considered an interpretation of a particular batter's raw power or isolated power. At its most, most basic, ISO simply tells us with one glance how often a particular hitter's hits go for extra bases. So we know from one of our first episodes that slugging or SLG tries to weight the value of extra base hits, meaning that a double is worth more than a single, a triple is worth more than a double, and a home run is worth more than a triple. What ISO tries to do is eliminate any of the extra added information that comes from a particular player's batting average. Because batting average, as we know, calculates any time a batter gets on base, whether it's a walk, a hit, a single, a double, batting average just looks at it all the same. If you get on base, your batting average is increased. ISO wants to remove all that noise and specifically look at any instance where that batter gets on base as a result of an extra base hit or using more power to get on base. And calculating ISO is actually one of the easiest stats to calculate. I don't even need to throw the calculations on screen. And there are actually three different ways you can calculate ISO. At its most basic calculation, you just take a player's slugging percentage and subtract their batting average. If you are looking for fun calculations, you can use the weighted extra base hit formula that I will put on the screen. Or you can just take a player's extra base hits and divide it by their at-bats. So because ISO specifically only wants to look at extra base hits, player could theoretically have a very high ISO, but a very low batting average. If a player rarely walks or hits singles, but happens to hit a home run once in every 10 at-bats, they're going to have a lower batting average, but a high ISO. And conversely, a player who takes a lot of walks or hits a lot of singles may have a really high batting average because they're getting on base Base quite regularly, but they might have a low ISO if they're not frequently hitting for extra base hits. So unlike some of the more advanced statistics we've looked at, like WRC plus or OPS plus, ISO is not park adjusted. So it's just a really simple, straightforward calculation. And as a result, it's very similar in its simplicity to something like a slugging percentage or a basic batting average. Now, what would we consider to be a good ISO? An ISO of around 140 is considered to be about lead average. Anything over about a 200 mark would be considered a power hitter or colloquially a slugger. So of course this comes with a caveat that if you want to get a good overall picture of a batter's quality, you can't look at ISO on its own because ISO only looks at a player's extra base hits. So if you do want a more complete picture of a batter's overall quality, still looking at something like WRC plus is a lot more of a complete picture of their ability than something like ISO. But as an isolated statistic, it is a really good way to kind of look at an individual batter's power. So if we want to look at a couple of real life examples, let's look at the 20 18 complete season. Mike Trout, who we've talked about a lot in the past because he is probably considered to be one of the best active baseball players at this time, and ISO will just agree with me on this, had a 316 ISO in 2018. And if we consider 200 to be a power hitter or a slugger, it just means that he's that much higher level than everybody else in the league at 140 being the average. Chris Davis of the A's had a 302, and he and Trout were actually the only players in MLB last season to have their ISO over 300. Now Fangraphs considers 250 to be excellent and only 14 players total including Trout and Davis were over that mark. What's interesting of course is that those players with high ISO had batting averages ranging anywhere from 206 for Joey Gallo whose ISO was 292 to a 
346 batting average for AL MVP Mookie Betts, and his ISO was 294. So it's a pretty interesting way to look at an individual player's power. And I just want to remind you guys again that you, it's a bit risky to use on its own because it is such a unique and distinctive statistic that only looks at one thing rather than the complete picture of what that batter is capable of doing. But if you really want to get an idea of how often a player is hitting for extra base hits, ISO is a really great way to narrow that down into one kind of neat and tidy number. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember to give it a thumbs up down below. Remember to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell if you want to be notified every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday when a new episode goes live. Leave a comment down below. What did you think ISO stood for? There's actually so many things that it does stand for. In this case though, just isolated power. Remember you can also follow me on social media. I'm at 90 feet from home on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And until next time, I hope you guys have an awesome day. Bye!